Welcome to MedSurge Mini number five, where we'll talk about lupus. Lupus is a chronic inflammatory autoimmune disease with unknown etiology. It is suspected that antibodies create immune complexes and deposit in different tissues. Because a wide variety of tissues can experience these deposits, the individual's experience of lupus is gonna be quite varied. Exacerbating triggers of Relapses of lupus include things like pregnancy, sunlight exposure, illness, surgery, exposure to silica dust, and medication allergies. As far as gender differences go, females tend to present with more, more comorbid Renaud syndrome, more photosensitivity, and they're more likely to develop ulcerations on their mucosal lining, so for example, in their mouth. Males that have lupus are more likely to have renal involvement, the skin disease, neurological involvement, thrombosis, cardiovascular disease, and vasculitis. Risk factors for developing lupus are female of gender, ethnicity, geography, and genetics. Symptoms vary from person to person, as I mentioned earlier, because it's gonna be dependent on where those deposits form, but typical symptoms can be fatigue, fever, concentration impairment, especially related to focus. From a renal perspective, we might see proteinuria, nephritis, and hematuria. From a musculoskeletal perspective, we can see joint pain, muscle pain, and weakness. From skin, we can see a butterfly rash, photosensitivity, alopecia, which is the loss of hair, urticaria, and ulcerations. Neurologically, they may develop strokes, seizures, neuropathy, psychosis, organic brain syndrome, depression, and anxiety. In regards to the heart, they're more likely to develop pericarditis, endocarditis, and cardiovascular disease. Pulmonary, they're more likely to develop pleurisy, pleural effusions, pneumonitis, interstitial lung disease, and pulmonary hypertension. Ocularly, they may develop retinal lesions, scleritis, and dry eyes. And from the blood perspective, they're more likely to develop, to develop leukopenia, anemia, thrombocytopenia, and thromboembolisms. And this is a picture of some of the skin involvement. So you can see the butterfly rash that's developing, and that's often a rash that develops over the bridge and on both cheeks, and it's symmetrical. The picture below that is a urticaria, and that's a specific um, rash that develops. It's a raised rash and it can be anywhere on the body. And then to the right, you can see that sometimes we also experience some discoloration in the fingers and toes. Diagnosis of lupus is hard because there's no specific test. Um, the diagnostic is based on a symptom clusters. We can do certain lab results to determine both the presence of the antibodies, as well as to determine which organs or regions may be impacted by the lupus um, experience. So for example, we can do the blood test to look for all of those different things we talked about in the symptoms. We can look for protein in the urine. We can test for thrombocytopenia, leukopenia, anemia. We may see a positive anti-nuclear antibody, which, um, is not specific to lupus, but it is commonly found in lupus. They're going to have a low complement blood test and they may have a positive anti-SM, anti-phospholipid antibodies and positive anti-double-stranded DNA. Complications in nursing problems include medical problems such as renal failure, development of heart disease, interstitial lung disease, hypercoagulation, stroke, necrosis of joints, and a compromised immune system. From a nursing perspective, some priority problems are going to be fatigue, pain, risk for stroke and cardiovascular events, um, impaired body image, dry eyes and mouth, altered skin integrity, and risk for infection. Treatment is based on disease prevention. We do have a couple of medications that aim to reduce the immune response, and this would be things like hydroxychloroquine, or Plaquenil, Methotrexate, and Belumimab. We can use NSAIDs and glucocorticoids for pain management, and we can also do surgical management if they need a joint replacement or an organ transplant. Non-pharmacologically, we would want to encourage the use of sunscreen, especially because exposure to sunlight may be a factor in 
the development of relapses of lupus. We can encourage certain diet changes, rest, and exercise. We know that our nursing interventions have been effective if we can reduce flare-ups, help with pain management, improve their self-image, especially if they have some of those skin um, symptoms, if they have absence of infection, and if we've reduced the risk of long-term complications. And that wraps up our mini discussion on lupus.